yesterday's attacks and other things. Some say that he does have time to Muslim extremists. I don't know. Uh, the president will be going to Cuba um, with the First Lady on March 21st and 22nd. Uh, this is the first uh, president to visit Cuba since Calvin Coolidge. U.S. President Barack Obama will be welcomed by the government of Cuba and the Cuban people with our traditional hospitality. March 21st, 2016. History is in the making. Barack Obama is about to land in Cuba. He is the first sitting U.S. president to visit the country in about nine decades. His three-day trip is to be a game-changer, a milestone in the history of both countries. For over five decades, Cuba has been ostracized, sanctioned and subverted by Washington. Now the rapprochement with Havana is offering a beacon of hope to the small island nation of 11 million people. Can Obama take the edge of years of US hostility which began overtly a year after the 1959 revolution that freed Cuba from centuries of foreign domination? Last year, he announced his good intentions. More than 54 years ago, at the height of the Cold War, the United States closed its embassy in Havana. Today, I can announce that the United States has agreed to formally re-establish diplomatic relations with the Republic of Cuba. Now, his short visit to Cuba could be a watershed in American politics. ¿Qué bola? Pues te digo, ¿qué bola? Oígame, qué bueno que nos viene a visitar, eh, para que conozca Cuba, para que conozca a su gente. I'm looking forward to it. The American people and the Cuban people are friends. Friend, friend, amigo, amigo, claro que sí. <laughs> Formalities, emotional scenes of reconciliation, and a friendly little chat. The joint press conference in the Palace of the Revolution. President Obama talks about steps taken so far. And today I can report that we continue to move forward on many fronts when it comes to normalizing relations. We're moving ahead with more opportunities for Americans to travel to Cuba and interact with the Cuban people. Yet abiding differences are hard to mask. A clash of political values is on the way. There are profound differences between our countries that will not go away. Since we hold different concepts on many subjects, after more than five very difficult decades, the relationship between our governments will not be transformed overnight. Soon, the summit turns into a scene of sparring over touchy issues. Among Obama's warm words, U.S. propaganda against the island keeps running. One of the impediments to strengthening those ties uh, is these disagreements around human rights and democracy. We oppose political manipulation and double standards in the approach to human rights. Cuba has much to say and show on this issue. That is why I have reiterated to the President our willingness to continue moving forward with the dialogue on this matter that was already initiated. President Raul Castro of Cuba has two serious demands from Obama. To hand back a legally held Guantanamo Bay and fully end the U.S. trade embargo. The blockade stands as the most important obstacle to our economic development and the well-being of the Cuban people. That's why its removal will be of the essence to normalize bilateral relations. In order to move forward towards normalization, it will also be necessary to return the territory illegally occupied by Guantanamo naval base. According to the UN, the blockade has cost the small country of Cuba more than 117 billion US dollars, deprived Cubans of life saving medicines, and caused extra hardships for millions of Cubans. 
Last October, for the 24th year in a row, the UN General Assembly voted overwhelmingly to denounce the US economic, commercial and financial blockade. By normalizing relations, Obama in fact seeks to rid Washington of the repeated embarrassment of global condemnation. However, terminating economic sanctions takes an act of Congress, something not seen on the horizon, a fact that Obama himself alludes to. The embargo is going to end. When? Uh, I can't be entirely sure, but I believe it will end. and. The path that we're on will continue beyond my administration. Frankly, Congress uh, is not as productive as I would like during a presidential election years. Perhaps the most problematic stumbling block to a rapprochement between Cuba and the U.S. is their dispute over Guantanamo Bay, something President Obama turned a deaf ear to when in Cuba. This is the year that we're going to shut down Guantanamo. This is the year that we're going to be to use our power to demand that Obama make good on his promise and close Guantanamo. There are 29 people who are at Guantanamo, at least, who were subjected to the CIA's secret detention program. A lot of them were tortured. We have people at Guantanamo who are still suffering the after effects, the trauma of the torture that they survived. They need surgery. They need access to medical care that they aren't getting, and that is compounding the injustice of Guantanamo. Guantanamo is now one of the United States' oldest and biggest overseas military facilities with two airfields, anchorage for 50 warships, about 1,400 buildings and more than 9,000 personnel. Cuban sovereignty over the territory is not contested, but the U.S. has an indefinite lease with the annual rent payment of approximately $4,000. The lease cannot be annulled without approval of both parties. Guantanamo has become a symbol of U.S. presidential weakness. Following exposés of rendition and torture, Obama has repeatedly promised to close down the Camp Delta detention facility on the base, but so far Congress has held up his plans. Guantanamo harms our partnerships with allies and other countries whose cooperation we need against terrorism. When I talk to other world leaders, they bring up the fact that Guantanamo is not resolved. Moreover, keeping this facility open is contrary to our values. It undermines our standing in the world. It is viewed as a, as a symbol of American hostility um, towards the Muslim world and Muslims generally. Uh, and this harms our standing in the, uh, in the world with other governments harms our standing on the so-called Arab street, um, and it provides inspiration to people who are recruiting for groups like ISIS. However, Obama's plan to close Guantanamo seems to be a pipe dream, a will-o'-the-wisp that can be seen in the current presidential campaigns. Just today, President Obama announced his plans to try to shut down Guantanamo terrorist detention facilities. Let me say this, Mr. President. Don't shut down Gitmo, expand it, and let's have some new terrorists there. Not only are we not going to close Guantanamo, when I'm president, if we capture a terrorist alive, they're not getting a court hearing in Manhattan, they're not going to be sent to Nevada, they're going to Guantanamo. This morning I watched President Obama talking about Gitmo, right, Guantanamo Bay, which by the way, which by the way, we are keeping open, which we are keeping open. And we're going to load it up with some bad dudes, believe me, we're going to load it up. Obama's historic visit has proven to be a false dawn. It did not help to turn a new page in the U.S. relations with Cuba. The embargo still remains on a majority of economic exchanges. White House officials have said closing the base and returning the territory are not on the U.S. agenda. The visit was the first step and there is a long way to go.